G'day, my name's Indy, BK2XB, among other things. Just want to take a few minutes of your time today um, to talk about one of my hobbies, which is amateur radio. Now, on this channel, I cover all sorts of garbage, unbelievable amount of rubbish. I figure that people either look at it, enjoy it, or ignore it, go to the next channel, doesn't matter. I don't monetize anything, so it doesn't matter. But every now and then I try to do something that's a little informative, and sometimes it's a bit useful. There are some clips on this um, channel already about amateur radio, and things that I've done in the truck with it and that's all well and good but I, this time I want to actually go back to basics and um, explain what it's all about in simple terms now I'm not a great orator and I'm not the world's smartest bloke I'm just a knockabout blue collar worker a lot of people have the perception about ham radio that it's completely full of nerds and technocrats and people who think that their doo doo doesn't smell. And I can say that there are some of each of those, but it covers such a broad spectrum of society that. Um, it's very hard to define. For instance, from um, um, some of the very rich and famous people in the world, uh, King Hussein of Jordan was an amateur. Uh, actors, uh, musicians, all sorts of people. Policemen, politicians, mm. truck drivers, electronics experts, computer geeks, whatever walk of life you care to think about, those are the people involved in the hobby. And it's very classless. It doesn't care what your colour or your skin is, what your religion is, uh, what your beliefs are, um, whether you're rich or you're poor, and where you come from in the world. And that's one of the beauties of the hobby. You certainly do not need to be a genius. Case in point. I'm a blue collar worker have been for about four decades and I've been a licensed amateur for around about the same period of time. I started off many many years ago when you had to um, pass here in Australia a regulation test, uh, radio theory, there was two levels of that and only two uh, and of course you had to have the Morse code, the dreaded Morse code, if you wanted to have HF privileges and I'll explain that in a while, a bit later on. And I didn't like Morse code too much and I didn't know anything about electronics. But with a little study, a little bit of application, and not a lot because, as I said, I'm just a truck driver. I'm no genius. I managed to attain the lowest level at that time, which was called a novice. Now, that required five words per minute, Morse code, regulations, and enough theory so that you wouldn't you knew how not to interfere with uh, televisions and broadcast stations 
how not to electrocute yourself and how to do uh, build antennas, simple repairs on radios and understand electronic circuitry. You know, things like resistors and capacitors and transistors and diodes and pentodes and various types of valves, all that sort of stuff. How they worked, resistance, current, voltage, and how not to electrocute yourself. Very important. And then sometime later, through the um, assistance of uh, many people who I spoke to over the radio, because I couldn't do formal classes, and I would have a question, so I'd ask a question on air. And uh, I got invaluable assistance to broaden my knowledge base. And eventually I passed um, the higher level of theory. And then later again, I passed a higher level of horse and uh, attained what's known as, a, at the time, a full call or an unrestricted amateur operator's certificate of proficiency here in Australia. Now, while I might be a road scholar, R O A D S scholar, I'm certainly no Rhodes Scholar, R-H-O-D-E-S. But just with a little application, I was able to pass. You have to learn things about uh, radio propagation, um, band allocations, and so on and so forth. Um, what, um, how the different... Um, frequencies react with the ionosphere for propagation. and There is a, a little bit involved at that stage and for my level of losses. These days is a lot more simple. Here in Australia, we have a foundation license and um, I'll put links in the description down there somewhere about um, uh, the various grades here in Australia and where you can um, obtain help to um, gain your license should you be interested. Amateurs are able to access basically the old, from where the old AM broadcast stations were um, for instance here in uh, in uh, Australia to UE and uh, 3db and stations like that um, around about there just above it that's about 1.8 megahertz here in Australia, we're also allowed 3.5 megahertz, 7 megahertz, 14 megahertz, 21 megahertz, 28, 50, 144, 440 megahertz, and so it goes on. There are others in, as, in between those two, known as the white bands, you know, 10 megs. Uh, 24 megs and so on and there's a relationship between the frequency and the wavelength but all that you'll learn when you do the course suffice to say it's an awfully broad spectrum of frequencies available to amateurs second only to the military in most countries which allows us to do all sorts of things we have Things like, uh, besides like what I do, which is a lot of operating on here uh, in my truck, but there's um, amateur television, various digital modes, anything that you can possibly do on uh, the internet or anywhere else, 
we can do for free without recourse to the internet. There are times when we do use the internet as well, but um, we're able to communicate with people all over the world just on air, pick up a microphone and talk, essentially. Most of the electronic gadgetry that you have at your disposal, for instance, radio, television, the internet, computer games, um, it literally goes on and on and on. Most of it was pioneered by amateurs, blokes like me. A lot smarter than me, but blokes like me with similar greater losses. And uh, there are still people today who continue to experiment and push the boundaries of what is capable, of what we are capable of doing. And there is almost limited, limitless um, variety of modes of operation and things that you can do, with it, do within a hobby. Now, you may decide that you would like to investigate becoming an amateur. Here in Australia, the first point of call would be the Wireless Institute of Australia. You'll find them at www.wia.org.au. In the United States, there's the ARRL. That's www.arrl.org. In um, the British Isles, RSGP. And just do a search on these things, or just do a search on Google for amateur radio in your country and find out where the umbrella body is who they are and just contact them and they'll put you in touch with people who can help you attain your losses. Now, currently here in Australia, we have a, well, it's changed, so, but there's a foundation license, which is basically very simple. It's just operating procedures, regulations, where you're allowed to um, transmit, and uh, that's about it. No Morse code requirement anywhere in Australia anymore. You can still do Morse, but you don't, you're not required to pass a Morse test. Then the next one up above that is a standard, which is about equivalent to my original license, which was called a novice and that allows you uh, a broader number of frequencies and to do a lot more with it. As a foundation licensee, you're not supposed to modify equipment. You basically got to use um, manufactured gear. But as a standard, you're allowed to um, modify equipment um, and um, you have a far broader um, range of frequencies available to you. And then the advanced, which is the next one up, which is what I have, and we just call it the full call or the unrestricted in the old days, and uh, that allows me everything that amateurs are, are um, entitled to. And um, if you go to wia.org, Dot au and uh, you can see on there the allocations and uh, the frequencies that we have at our disposal as well as the modes. So if you're interested in amateur radio, contact your local uh, umbrella organisation, whether it be the WIA here in Australia, RSGB, ARRL, 
whatever it is in Canada and elsewhere. Just do a, do a Google search and uh, get in touch with them and I'm sure that they will help you attain your license. And trust me, you don't have to be a genius. Just a little um, housekeeping if you like here too. You notice every now and then I look down, it's this. This controls that thing. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm trying to turn it on and off. I'm not a videographer. I'm not an ink flash. All I am is a truck driver that has an interest in amateur radio. So if it, if this doesn't uh, float your boat, that's fine. Thank you for your time. Cheers. And in ham radio, we say 73. The following two graphics was stolen from vkham.com. Thanks very much. Your name was Steph, and um, I'm using a uh, a Kenwood TS480 Hotel X-ray. And five by five, you are five by five in Europe. Congratulations for your mama doing an exceptional job. The condition is very, very interesting this evening. Uh, are you on the ship or on the truck? Over. No, I'm in the car at the moment. If when you see that picture that's on QRZ, that is the truck that I drive for a living. But at the moment I'm in the car, I'm on my way to go to work. And my work is currently around about uh, 230 kilometers to the east of where I am. That's where I'll jump in my truck today. And then I will drive from there no, X-ray Bravo. Yeah, it's a bit over, it's a bit compressed, so it's a bit hard to understand. It's a bit over compressed, over. Ah, uh, it's probably just a lot of Cummins engine in the background and a lot of rattling on a corrugated dirt road, over. It probably is. Or is it? Or what do you prefer, Ian or Indy? Ah, uh, anything will do, mate. Just don't call me late for a feed. 
There is a story behind it. Uh, I live out in the middle of nowhere and there's another fellow with exactly the same first name, exactly the same last name, same middle initials. We're not related and uh, 